Hello, I'd like to thank the Chilean Senate, Senator Chiarti, and the extended Congresso Future team for inviting me here to, today to speak about our views on reimagining the energy ecosystem with green hydrogen. I'd like to particularly thank Chile and Minister Hubei for your global leadership in green hydrogen and the role it can play in achieving a carbon neutral planet. The action plan and practical governance framework proposed in your national green hydrogen strategy is a model for all countries around the world. The urgency of your leadership has never been greater. Millions of people around the world have been impacted by severe storms, droughts, fires, and rising sea levels, galvanizing resolve to take action. In the words of Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General, climate change is the defining issue of our time, and we are at a defining moment. The good news is that we have the solutions at our fingertips. I'm here to talk to you today about green hydrogen and why I believe it's a super game changer in our fight against climate change and in building economic prosperity. People have been talking about the hydrogen economy for more than two decades. We first started hearing about hydrogen buses and fuel cell EVs in the early 2000s. Is this all hype? Is the hydrogen economy finally here? My answer to this question is emphatically yes. And it's poised to take off. And even better news, it's a green hydrogen economy. I'd like to first start by defining what I mean by green hydrogen. Hydrogen that is not produced from fossil fuel feedstocks and does not produce incremental carbon emissions during its primary production process. We like to define green hydrogen what it is not so that we don't exclude future innovations and pathways for making green hydrogen. Today, it can be commercially produced via electrolysis, steam reformation of biogas, or thermal conversion of biomass. For the purposes of today's discussion, I'll be focusing primarily on electrolytic pathways, which are widely recognized as scalable and poised for dramatic cost reduction. Here's the big, big idea. Plants have been making fuel from water and sun since the dawn of time. And you know what? So can we. Think of green hydrogen as the strategic clean energy fuel for our generation and future generations. We became so excited about the game-changing potential of green hydrogen to decarbonize our planet that we formed a new nonprofit called the Green Hydrogen Coalition to accelerate progress. Our mission? To facilitate policies and practices to advance the production and use of green hydrogen in all sectors where it will accelerate a carbon-free energy future. Our approach and fundamental thesis is a little different from other hydrogen organizations. We believe that by aggregating multi-sectoral demand in strategically targeted areas, we can enable large-scale supply development, including the production, transport, and storage infrastructure necessary for low delivered cost. I'd like to now turn to why we believe green hydrogen is a super game changer and why the time is now for the green hydrogen economy. There are five key reasons why green hydrogen has finally achieved its rightful status as a super game changer. The first is that green hydrogen is poised to decarbonize a very large and already globally traded commodity market for gray hydrogen, which is made from fossil fuels. Secondly, because it's commercially viable and on track to be lower cost than hydrogen made from fossil fuels, due to significant cost reductions in renewable electricity and electrolysis equipment. Third, green hydrogen enables the reuse of existing infrastructure, enabling an affordable energy transition. Fourth, to achieve power sector decarbonization goals, there's a need for multi-day and seasonal renewable energy storage, which is only possible today with green hydrogen. And finally, as a flexible carbon-free fuel substitute, green hydrogen is a game changer to help us achieve multi-sectoral decarbonization. I'm gonna go through each one of these in a little further detail. The first is that hydrogen is a mature commodity resource. Globally, there are about 100 million metric tons produced and sold each year. The vast majority is made from natural gas or coal, and most hydrogen is used for oil refining and the production of ammonia, 
of which most goes into making fertilizer. This chart from the International Energy Agency shows production sources on the left and the current uses on the right. You may notice this little tiny yellow line and that shows the renewable sources of green hydrogen. That line is poised to grow very rapidly. Because hydrogen is made from natural gas and coal today, it produces a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. Emissions from global production, if treated like a country, would exceed those of Germany. This means that displacing gray and brown hydrogen with green hydrogen represents a significant decarbonization opportunity all by itself. And what's even more exciting is that green hydrogen is a flexible molecule that can displace fossil fuels in other applications and sectors, particularly the hard to abate ones like shipping and aviation. So why is the green hydrogen conversation different today here in 2020 than say in 2002 when the Department of Energy of the United States published its first hydrogen roadmap? A very significant fact today is that wind and solar are now the lowest cost sources of energy in many countries around the world. The low cost of wind and solar is in turn making electrolytic pathways to produce green hydrogen much more attractive. Electrolysis equipment is where battery storage was maybe in 2010 or 2011, poised for rapid cost reduction with scale up. In the last five years, electrolyzer costs have fallen by 45% and are forecasted to continue to fall with scaled production. This chart, again, from the International Renewable Energy Agency, compares the levelized cost of green hydrogen in dollars per kilogram over time under different renewable electricity pricing scenarios. The solid green and blue lines represent best case solar and wind, and the shaded gray area shows when green electrolytic hydrogen made from these resources will be cost competitive with blue and gray hydrogen. Notably, by 2025, green hydrogen will be competitive with blue hydrogen, namely fossil fuel derived hydrogen with carbon sequestration. And by 2030, green hydrogen becomes competitive with gray hydrogen when it achieves a dollar to a dollar 50 per kilogram. This forecast is widely supported not only by international agencies, but also by numerous industry analysts and industrial oil and gas majors. Green hydrogen can be used as a zero carbon drop-in fuel replacement for natural gas in the power sector. Utilities around the world are exploring blending and injecting hydrogen directly into natural gas pipelines. There are also 100% hydrogen pipelines already in use today. The United States has the longest such pipeline in the world, more than 600 miles long, mostly connecting oil refineries, but it's still operational and demonstrates you can safely do this. We can also repurpose other valuable assets, such as this 1800 megawatt coal-fired power generator in Utah that's being converted to a 100% green hydrogen gas turbine. This conversion leverages the plant's existing facilities, its skilled labor force, and its vast electric interconnection capacity. Rather than dispatching coal generation, this plant will soon be dispatching stored solar and wind by combusting green hydrogen. Repurposing existing infrastructure is key because that is what will make the energy transition affordable and achievable. Many governments have set targets for zero carbon power sectors. Achieving this with low cost wind and solar will require seasonal energy storage. What this next chart shows is the net surpluses and deficits of energy throughout the course of a hypothetical year in California under a 100% renewable scenario. A quick glance points to the need for multi-day and seasonal storage to balance supply and demand. And today, green hydrogen is the only commercially viable seasonal storage solution. Green hydrogen as a fuel substitute is also a great alternative to gas and diesel for remote power systems and emergency backup systems. So as a fuel substitute, not only will low cost green hydrogen soon displace gray and brown hydrogen in existing commodity markets, but it is also poised to dramatically grow hydrogen demand over time, displacing liquid fossil fuels in transport and industrial applications too. 
There are applications and sectors that cannot decarbonize without green hydrogen or some other zero carbon fuel substitute, including aviation, industrial heat applications, and some entities who have expressed a desire to be carbon free 24 by seven. Google, one of the largest electricity consumers in the United States, has recently announced its intention to go beyond 100% renewable. They are now seeking to achieve 100% renewable energy in all hours of the day, in all days of the year, and in every location. Green hydrogen will be a viable, scalable solution. Even Airbus has announced a plan for zero emission flight. So what's it going to take for the green hydrogen economy to really take off? Big picture, green hydrogen will be successful if it can compete with today's fuels. Getting there will require focus and leadership, aggregating and scaling demand and supply, repurposing infrastructure and jobs development, as well as supportive policies and regulation. These drivers will enable green hydrogen to achieve cost effectiveness and competitiveness, meaning the net benefits of green hydrogen must exceed those of the status quo fossil fuel alternative. The Green Hydrogen Coalition commenced operations in 2019 to make progress on all of these fronts. Importantly, our first partnership was with Los Angeles in support of the conversion of the Intermountain Power Project, that coal plan I showed you a minute ago. To drive top-down momentum for further regional project and infrastructure development, the GHC launched the Western Green Hydrogen Initiative in partnership with the National Association of State Energy Officials and the Western Interstate Energy Board. This is a public-private partnership between the GHC, 11 states, and two Canadian provinces that will enable focused attention and leadership on green hydrogen infrastructure development. For 2021, the GHC will focus on regionally targeted demand aggregation, the foundational requirement for any new significant project development. Regarding new at-scale project development, the GHC will initially focus on demand aggregation initiatives in the Wasatch Front in Northern Utah and in Southern California, the latter serving as a potential long-term export hub for international trade through the Port of Long Beach and the Port of LA. Targeted demand in each of these areas includes thermal electric generation, oil refining, mining operations, airports, maritime and inland ports, as well as fueling stations for on-road transport. The GHC is also focused on working with state level policymakers and other ecosystem participants to develop practical policy solutions to mitigate barriers for large project development. Key areas of focus include, one, stakeholder engagement and alignment, creating state level organizational capacity to focus on green hydrogen Chile's nat national hydrogen strategy gets an A++ in this regard. My favorite quote, what you focus on is what you get. Secondly, we need to reduce the high cost of green hydrogen production, transport, and storage to achieve low delivered cost. We're already seeing via legislation in the Pacific Northwest, the ability for utilities to repurpose and socialize infrastructure cost. Efforts to utilize existing gas pipelines for injection and blending will be a great way to utilize existing infrastructure. We also need to aggressively aggregate demand in specific geographic areas and create new premium offtake opportunities and build new hydrogen pipeline and storage infrastructure. Third, green hydrogen needs to be formally recognized and included in part of the as part a core part of the core multi-sectoral decarbonization toolkit. This can be done via legislation and at the regulatory level by explicitly including it in integrated resources planning efforts. Lastly, we need market signals to encourage investment and build a bankable value proposition. There's a lot that could happen here, including procurement mandates, targets, tariff and market reform, as well as improved compensation mechanisms for carbon reduction. We also need to focus on the development of new codes and standards for new applications of green hydrogen and the tracking and monetization of its environmental benefits. Importantly, we are always seeking to develop new champions to build momentum and drive results. We believe the future trajectory of the green hydrogen economy rests on our ability to build alignment, courage, and inspiration in the hearts and minds 
of a few well-placed champions, some of whom I dare say are participating in this meeting today. I'll close with a quote from Margaret Mead, a famous cultural anthropologist. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. And I'd like to invite all of you to collaborate with us. Please reach out and stay in touch. The GHC's website has a tremendous amount of educational resources to share. Thank you.